Sunday Spotlight is brought to you by Bay Area Children's Theater. Hi, everyone. It's me, Kalia Davis, the Artistic Director of Bay Area Children's Theater. Welcome to Sunday Spotlight. This is the show where we shine a spotlight on individuals who are doing amazing work for their community and industry. Today's guests are our incredible artists from the Bay Area Children's Theater Writers Room, Ali Travis, Carissa Atala, and Samantha Miller. Here are three things you need to know about our writers. Samantha Miller may be fluent in Japanese and can understand anime without subtitles, but she's also not the only Samantha in the writer's room. We also have another amazing creative storyteller named Samantha Blaine. Carissa loves to travel and has lived in Germany, England, Chile, Argentina, and Lebanon. Ali can make sounds just like Donald Duck. Welcome everyone to Sunday Spotlight. It is so good to see your faces. Hi. Why don't you share with our viewers out there where you are calling in from and who you are? Hi, um, I'm Ali Travis and I'm calling in from Des Moines, Iowa. Hi, I'm Carissa Atala and I'm here in San Jose, California. Hi, my name is Samantha Miller and I'm calling in from Seattle, Washington. So basically we're all over the place right now. Thank goodness for virtual. <laughs> all right, I start my show off with the same question for every guest. Who did you see or what did you see that inspired you to pursue this career in the arts? And I'll start with Ali. So, I was inspired to start a career in the arts because I grew up with cartoons and I love cartoons. Shout out Cartoon Network, shout out Disney Channel. It was like just amazing for me. Uh, and so as I got a little bit older, I started to really appreciate all of the different elements that go into cartoons and making them. So from the music to the singers and actors and artists and animators and just so many amazing people come together to make one thing. That inspired me to be interested in writing and in theater and just that whole thing. So, yeah. <laughs> Carissa, who or what inspired you to pursue the arts? Sure, so I was actually lucky enough to grow up about uh, 20 minutes driving distance from Disneyland, California. And that was something that I really enjoyed as a child growing up even to this day. Um, what inspired me to join the arts was just the, the fact that Disney was able to bring my family together, my friends together, and we were able to share in the magic and share in the storytelling. Who doesn't love a little bit of that Disney magic? I know I do. Samantha, what inspired you? For me, as a kid, I loved going to plays, especially every year I looked forward to the fifth grade play that my school would put on. Every year, all of the fifth graders got together and did a play. So every year as a first grader, as a second grader, as a third grader, as a fourth grader, we were all brought to go watch the fifth grade play. And it was just so fun to see other kids like me up on stage. And it made me start thinking about how I wanted to get on stage like that. And that just led me down all of these pathways to eventually be an artist myself full time. And we're really thrilled that you decided to become an artist. All of you have created some amazing work so far as you've joined our Bay Area Children's Theater Writers Room. In fact, what are some things that have been exciting for you being part of creating a lot of this new original work? Anybody? It's been so much fun just to get together with all of these smart and creative people and make our own stuff. It's so much fun to bring all of our skill sets together. We have artists in here. We have a bunch of writers. We have people who can sing and play guitar. And to come together and make our own characters and make our own stories, it's just been so exciting every single day to see what we can make together. Yeah, absolutely. And to build off that a little bit, I always thought growing up that writing was something that would be done very solitary, always something like I would do by myself. and 
as I've kind of gotten older and started to build a life for myself as a writer, I've realized that environments that I thrive in are collaborative. And so this has been a really exciting opportunity to still do the writing that I love, but to do it in a way that is collaborative and it's interactive with a ton of other people. Yeah, I, I kind of want to bounce on uh, what both of you are saying, because um, I have always, you know, loved writing and making up stories, you know, since I can remember, but making those stories up with a group has been one of the most exciting and new things for me that I'm just not used to. And I've loved every second of, and that's just been really new and exciting and amazing. This is great. Yeah, we wanted that idea of collaboration, teamwork, ensemble. It's something that we really thrive in here at Bay Area Children's Theater. So I'm so happy to hear that bringing all of these brilliant minds together is actually really benefiting the whole experience. That being said, we also know that it's hills and valleys uh, when it comes to creating new work. And we are in the middle, the thick of creating one of our biggest projects to date, a new original musical based on imaginary friends. And so I want to ask you all, what are some um, surprising uh, things that have come out of this process that maybe you weren't expecting to have to deal with, or maybe a bit of a challenge right now that you're trying to overcome? I have, I have some thoughts. So <laughs> um, one of the, it's, it's, it's one of the things that I actually really love um, that's challenging is that there are so many different ideas, which means there's so many different directions that we can go. And it's actually one of the surprising things is how all of those very, very different ideas can actually synergize and make room for each other. And actually the biggest surprise is when um, we have all of these ideas, they come together, make one thing that neither one of us alone would ever have thought of. Um, I mean, I'm even thinking of the uh, the book that we made that I'm really excited about. I don't think any one of us would ever have just sat down and made something like that, but together we made it. And that was, I think, a surprise to all of us exactly how it turned out. And I think we're all happy with it. I totally agree. Working together has made us so much stronger as artists, I think. And I also wanted to say that what has surprised me is just all of the skills we have in this small group of people. It really amazed me how, not just with everybody, but also with myself, there are things that I don't necessarily put on my resume that I have ended up using in this process, in making this work. And so it's really exciting that things that I just do for fun, like coloring or doodling or things like that, that's suddenly something that I can use with a group of people to make an awesome project that a lot of people are gonna be able to see. How cool is that? So that was surprising, just seeing just the skill sets of all of the people we have, music and writing and, and, and composing and all of this stuff coming together. It was a surprise just to see all of the capabilities that everybody has as an individual. Yeah, totally. Um... Another thing that's surprising for me is kind of how organically certain ideas end up like rising to the top. Like for instance, uh, there was a character concept, a name that was like thrown around in one of our earliest drafts of the script. I don't even know necessarily who thought of it. And through like the various drafts, through the different illustrations that people were making, that character just seemed to kind of stick. And so now going into the final stages of, of our script, that character is now the main character. So that's kind of been surprising for me because there's really no planning all of that stuff. It kind of just happens. I, yeah, I'm really fascinated by this idea of when all of these talents combine and you do have opportunity to create organically, like do people are just kind of throwing ideas out there. What has it been like in the room itself when it comes to sharing those ideas? Mm -hmm. I actually have a pretty funny image of what we look like when we're in a brainstorming session. <laughs> um, when we are trying to come up with ideas, we'll we'll make a Google doc or a spreadsheet of just ideas, just throw them out there and we'll see what sticks, right? Kind of like what Carissa was talking about. And there, it's pretty funny. We're all in our Zoom squares 
and there will be ideas going around and then just silence and all of us going like this. And then someone will come up with another idea and then more of this. So that's what it's like in the room. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> can like we, room let's, of- I love this. Can we actually, all of us together and all of you out there, let's give our most intense thinking creation face on the count of three. One, two, three. Hmm. <laughs> That's awesome. I love it. Yeah. What else is it like working together in the room itself? What's fun is that um, we'll be working like asynchronistically. And then when we come together, like, like Ali might be like, oh, let me like whip out my ukulele and like play some of the song. And then that will kind of like get the ball rolling even further. Um, so yeah, and then are like, we'll bring in images that have been illustrated. And so it kind of just becomes this uh, like digital space where we're kind of like show and tell of what we've been working on. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, something that I notice about each of you is that not only do you create art because you love it and you're very good at it, but you're also creating art that means something, that when it's put out into the world, there's a purpose behind it. What does creating new original types of work mean to you as an artist? Why is that important to you? Why does it matter? Uh, I want to speak to that a little bit. So I'm really, really passionate about creating new original work. And here's why. New original work is the only way to really take in what is happening in our world right now and how that affects real people who might see what we're going to create and how can we give them something that is relevant to right now. Obviously, of course, the classics are amazing. We love the classics. The classics can still seem as relevant as today sometimes, but it's still important to be able to take what's going on around us and be able to create it into a work that is, hey, here's what's going on with you right now. And we have something just for you to get you through this or to celebrate with you. You know, I think that's just cool. Yeah, I totally agree. And there's just so much going on right now that isn't necessarily represented in the classics or in our favorite books. We Sometimes we turn our favorite books into theater shows and those are a lot of fun, but there's so many more stories that we can tell and that we can create and that we can put on stage and people can come and see. And I think it's just, I think it's just so important that young people get to be a part of today and today's entertainment because there's always new shows coming out for adults and new, you know, dramas and and things that um, adults enjoy coming out every single day. So I I think it's only fair that young people and (laughs) young people and teenagers and kids and people that aren't necessarily served the most that they also get new stuff. Yeah, I feel that so much because like, even as we've been talking about like our influences, like I think we can all think of the, the shows that we grew up with, the plays, the musicals, whatever, that we grew up with. And I think back and I think of what a privilege it was that that had affected my life, like how, what a gift it was. Um, But at the same time, there are, uh, you know, ways that there can still be so much more that can be told um, and children deserve that, right? They deserve to be given those gifts. And in a way that's meaningful to them in their lives right now and representative of who they are as individuals. So if we can just be a little bit a part of that, then that's, you know, really cool. I completely agree. In fact, that's a great segue into my final question for all of you. It's a bit of an imagination exercise that I want all of you to participate in with me. So The show that we are all working on together is called The Imaginaries. The thing about this show that's really um, touching for all of us is that an imaginary friend could literally be anything, anyone from anywhere. And that, uh, that means that the ideas are limitless, like, oh, unlimited possibilities. So give yourselves a little bit of time to think about this, but not too much time. Think about 
If you were an imaginary friend for a human child, what kind of imaginary friend would you be? I'll jump in. I think that I would be something like very cute and fluffy, like an alpaca or a sheep. Something like just um, that is just overwhelmingly um, cute, but also like you could, you know, there's all these kind of functions, like we can make sweaters and stuff. I think, yeah, I think that's the avenue I would go in. But maybe I would be like a, a crazy like rainbow color scheme too, just to spice it up a little bit. I think that I would be an adventure fairy. I would be a tiny little sprite that hovers over the shoulder of the kid. And I would have a magical wand that can take them on any adventure they wanna go. It, I can take them around the world. I could take them to a new magical world, whatever they can think of. I would be their adventure guide and take them anywhere that they could ever imagine going. That sounds so much fun. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I think I would be like, so I'm imagining like my favorite animals. Like I'm thinking of like dogs and like bears and sharks, I guess. But if I could be like, I don't know, it could even be like a dog bear shark, <laughs> you know, it can be anything. So I'd probably be, I'd probably be a dog bear shark. And, and I think that we would get into all kinds of fun and go exploring with our jetpacks, obviously. Um, and that's what we do. We take our jetpacks anywhere we want to go, any day we want to go there. And we have a lot of fun. <laughs> all of these imaginary friends sound amazing. And I'm sure all of the human children watching right now are like, yes, I want to play with all of you. <laughs> it's like so much fun. It has been a pleasure and a dream to spend some time with our Bay Area Children's Theater Writers Room participants, Carissa, Ali, and Samantha. I think that it's time for our creative craft. So kids, you've heard us talk about imaginary friends. You've even heard our friends here talk about what it would be like to be their own imaginary friend. It is now time for you all to get creative. We want you to write a story where you have an imaginary friend and you go on an adventure. In our book, Pocket Guide for Imaginary Friends, there are actual comic strips where this really does happen. So we want you to draw or write a fun story with your imaginary friend. Bonus points. If you feel inclined, if you want to, we challenge you to then act out this adventure in front of your grownups. It'll be a really fun time. Thank you so much to our guests for being here. And thank you to you for tuning into this very special episode of Sunday Spotlight. Now, go get creative and keep shining. Bye, everyone. Bye.